Starfield is a new blockbuster game from Bethesda, and is perhaps a minor cultural point. Having completed the game's main story and got to level 35, I can say that I liked some of it. Some of it was quite frustrating. There's a lot to say about the design choices, but I think those things could be overlooked by me had the setting and the story not been so generic. So, here we go. Starfield. It's alright. It appears you are the new captain of the frontier. <laughs> are you flirting with me? Tony and I want to see what else is out there. So yes, this is Starfield. Some of it. And this is my attempt at making John Waters, demigod and only competent entity in the entire galaxy. Starfield is set in the 24th and a half century, when interstellar travel is almost trivial and people live on planets, moons, spaceships, the whole caboodle. Most of the gameplay involves shooting things on the ground, shooting things in space, talking to people and helping them out, often by delivering something and just sort of wandering around. Although the cities can feel familiar in scope to something like Skyrim, much of them is hidden away behind different doors and floors, and the sheer number of them add up to a huge roster of things to do and people to talk to. The main story is long and arduous. There are many unique side quests, and a never-ending list of ships to shoot down and bad guys to go get. And that, I think, is Starfield's strength. There really is a lot to do, and people to antagonise. But I would describe the game's loop of exploration, combat, talking to people, flying, as pretty weak, because these individual components are all relatively shallow. The combat is far pacier than in Skyrim or Fallout, but is trivial even on the hardest settings. The enemies are morons, and you're not. The exploration, especially following the story and visiting, and this is your spoiler warning, temples, often boils down to land and walk 800 meters. If you're lucky, there'll be something to see. Get to the temple, spend 10 minutes floating around, get a power you'll never use. Out of the main quest, exploring is land and walk 800 meters. There'll either be a civilian you can trade generic stuff with, a not-so-abandoned facility with people to shoot, or an interesting rock. I found the space combat most challenging, but that always ends up as a knife fight where you just point your ship at the enemy and shoot them. As I upgraded my ship, I had hoped the space fights might take on more nuance with maneuvers or strategy becoming relevant, but the path of least resistance just led me to a ship that had really good guns and really good shields. The Spaceship Builder is a nice addition, but ultimately felt disappointing when I realised most of the interior compartments were really just cosmetic, and you're limited on how many weapons you can place. If they had made the Builder more akin to the modular system in Subnautica, where the player places sections, but can then furnish those sections however they want, it would have been a much more gratifying system, even with the other limitations. I'd have loved to put up some string lights around my spaceship, maybe a knackered old couch, and a sarcastic poster. But every time you modify your ship, your haphazardly dropped decorations get put into junk. And so, most of the ships I flew felt very much the same, both inside and in terms of handling. I can't speak much to the outpost system. I barely got into it. Like Fallout 4, there ultimately isn't much impetus to build outposts other than for your own gratification. But unlike Fallout 4, you can build anywhere. Which sounds good, but after building a little bit I realised anywhere I built was going to end up as people living in domes with nothing to do and no reason to visit. Without the novelty of dressing everyone as surly chefs, or building around a unique location, I didn't really see the point. But I did enjoy quite a bit of Starfield, and I'll probably play more with my new game plus, if for no other reason than to test UC security. 
pew, 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 pew. I think eventually many of the shortcomings will be ironed out by modders and to a lesser extent DLC. And I think Starfield could feel like a really complete, deeper game in about five years time when you could pick it up for $20. Having said that, one thing that can't be changed by those things is the setting. For me, it would be far easier to forgive gameplay as it is if the setting were way more fleshed out and if the story was more nuanced. The story has you and a group of explorers looking for the creatively named artifacts, which eventually you put together to find that there are different universes. The story gets a bit meta in allowing the player to start a new game with their skills and knowledge because the multiverse allows those who have assembled the artifacts to cross the multiverse in search of more artifacts for some reason. But we never find out who made them or why, and that was the mystery. It's presented as, who made them doesn't matter, it's the journey that matters, and then play again and don't find out this time either. What's less satisfying than a lazy it was aliens explanation? A lazy non-explanation. But I could look past that in such a big open world game, where side missions and innumerous opportunities for murder can mean you never need to start on that journey. I'm not sure my biggest problem with Starfield is its setting and tone, but it's probably the most important in accepting the other problems. The game is set in a fairly grounded sci-fi future where the Earth has been uninhabitable for more than a hundred years. It's not an alternate future necessarily. NASA was around until at least 2150. You can visit the London Shard if you want. There are three main factions, really the nations occupying the galaxy. The United Colonies, the Free Star Collective, and House Varun, the latter of which makes little appearance. Almost 20 years ago, the United Colonies and Free Star Collective ended a war. But the problem with this is they're really just both America light in space, with little but superficial differences between them. People sometimes speak languages other than English, NPCs sometimes speak with accents that aren't American, but the two super countries are very similar culturally and even then their cultures are generic and shallow. It feels like anything nuanced or challenging has been stripped out, or really, never added. If we're going without the wackiness of something like Fallout, and presenting a pretty serious, ooh, what-if scenario of humanity's future in the stars, well, what's the Pope up to? What happened to those billions of Muslims? What happened to North Korea? Hmm, is that a bit too hard to write? The game shows wealth built on top of poverty and the plight of the have-nots, but it never really begins to explore this. Its societies don't really make much sense. There's a habitable planet not unlike Earth. Why not build all over that rather than living on a moon and mining ice by hand? The war ended 20 years ago, but apparently most of the galaxy is still devastated with pirates everywhere but this is just the perpetual state of the world, I guess. It feels like, in an effort to dud-proof the narrative, they've boiled away all the flavour. A galaxy where Earth is uninhabitable and people live in hermetically sealed cities sounds dystopian, but that never comes through as anything other than an incidental backdrop. Almost as though they made their game thinking, well, we've seen sci-fi movies that look like this, so make it look like this. There was a real opportunity here for Bethesda to draw a science fiction world, nasty to the touch, without using sci-fi noir or neon punk crutches, to make a broken galaxy where people feel desperate, or at least some of them do, and where you can offer help beyond, let me deliver that for you. Most people I came across seemed pretty content. There is no emergency to solve, and no real antagonist driving things. I'm not saying that I wanted things to be post-apocalyptic, but that the social commentary seems completely neutered. 
The United Colonies and Free Star Collective are both basically free, democratic, bureaucratic, and I've no idea what either really believe in or stand for beyond seeing the other as competition. There's no moral conundrum or even really comment on who you choose to hang out with. The depth of the setting and the width of the moral spectrum on display and up for occupying are not usually the most important things to me in a game, and they're not in this game, but their failing was what left me most cold. It's not like I think the writing in other Bethesda games was fantastic or anything like that, but in terms of story, Starfield seems to dress a lot of fanfare around a core idea of, we have nothing to say. It feels wide at the expense of being shallow. Uh, having said that, I'll probably play a bit more, maybe today. Uh, some of my funnest moments in Starfield were encountering Bethesda's janky glitches, uh, so I'd, if you play Starfield, write a comment if you want, telling me about your funniest moments in Starfield. Not played Starfield, write a comment about your funniest moments anyway. Did you wake up on the morning of your brother's wedding to find out, oh god, I've shit the bed, drank a bit too much last night, reach for something, start mopping it up, it's only the bloody bridal gown. I'd love to hear about it. Write it down. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Today it's live fire exercises, tomorrow hiking miles over rough terrain, 